Hey guys, welcome to the Art of Painting Furniture. So today's subject is this Genkyo, um, I really don't know if it's a, if it's a coffee table or not, Sam. whatever it is, it's totally square, it's been broken, I did some gluing on it, and it was free. My hubby picked it up off the side of the road. So I love doing these kind of makeovers because you don't feel like you've invested money in them. So anytime you see something on the side of the road, pick that up and take it home. It's the perfect blank canvas for you to just play and create and learn and not worry about spending money that you're going to tear up something because it's already tore up. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to do some modification. I don't like the way it looks. Um, the drawers work well. They're fine. I took that out. I don't like this style of leg, this kind of curvy thing. My style is more of a modern farmhouse, kind of a sleek industrial kind of look. Um, so I'm gonna trim this lower part off and we're gonna make it more just square. And then I'm gonna add some really cool legs. I haven't decided on the legs yet, but um, once I get this cut off, we'll look at it and decide what kind of legs we want. And then we're gonna go to the painting. So let me get my tools out and let's get to flipping this table and let's make it into something fabulous. Okay, before you start cutting into furniture, you need to flip it upside down because you need to know what the structure underneath is. And when you start cutting, you wanna make sure there's not any screws or anything you're gonna cut into because what my ideal for this piece is that we trim all of this decorative piece off here all the way down and make it straight all the way around. And that's going to be kind of a, it's going to be kind of a tough go because it's super thick, which this is a great piece for it because it's solid wood. It's super thick. It's sturdy. It's durable. And there's no screws that go up to this area. So I can take a, um, a speed square or a square and I'm going to go ahead and draw a line to make it square. And then I'm going to take out my, uh, my jigsaw here and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna cut that whole base off and then that's gonna leave us a solid piece under here that we can attach legs to. So we can find some cool legs and actually put on this piece and make it look super, super modern. Okay, so once I've determined that there's no screws when I cut, they're gonna get in here. I'm gonna take something and make a straight line and I actually used um, this square here because it's a long straight line and then I used these little edges this is where I want to cut I use this as my guide to be straight and I'm going to take a pencil or a line and I'm going to mark all the way over and that'll let me cut so I can start cutting from like in here and I can kind of go up into here and then come back and cut and I'll show you how I'm going to do that with uh, the jigsaw so I'm going to go ahead and mark this off and we'll do one side at a time. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that all the way down on both sides. Okay, now is for a teaching moment. And I I like when these things happen because it, it teaches me and then I can turn around and teach them to you. So I started removing the legs. You know, we went and we drew the line around it. Um, I took my jigsaw and I started, well, it was too slow. It was way too slow. I was like, this is gonna take forever and it's gonna burn up my jigsaw, right? Uh, or, yeah, it's gonna burn it up. So I decided to get my circular saw. So I grabbed my circular saw, not this one, but the one that I burned up. <laughs> I just burned up my saw. It was an old saw anyway, right? It was ready to go. I probably just finished it off. So this was a new one. I just jumped in the car, ran up to Home Depot and grabbed me a new one. And this is one I like. This actually has a laser on it too, which is really good for when you're cutting straight lines. You don't have to worry about looking at the blade when you should be looking at the blazer. So uh, the, the laser uh, beam. So uh, what I found out is that blades matter, especially when you're cutting a hardwood. This is solid oak and I'm pretty sure it's solid oak or maybe it's maple. It could be hard rock maple. It may be now that I'm looking at it, it's hard rock maple. I know it is, I just misspoken. So I used a finish blade because I thought I wanted a really smooth line. You know, when you're cutting, you don't want to rip it with a real aggressive tooth on your, on your saw. So this has more blades on it or more of these little teeth on it, which means it's gonna finer cut. So I burned it up. Look, you can even see how hot it was. Well, after learning that lesson, I got another blade. This blade actually is, um, it doesn't have uh, as many teeth, but it has teeth that are wider. And this is actually a, a framing um, 
blade so it's good to cut wood and stuff so i actually went back and i tried it and it cuts like a dream so i'm going to show you um actually on this last pass i already got two legs cut off and then i've just got these other two so let me uh, grab this off and then uh, clear a little path and show you how i do this <laughs> let's learn right cutting this piece off and then we'll be ready to uh, I'm gonna sand the bottom of it down and get it smooth and then turn it upside down and look at it and see where we're gonna put the leg placement so we have this big box now see well it's heavy too I love the little laser. Can you see that little red laser? It shows you actually where to cut. barely on there so I'm gonna go ahead and just twist this off yep got it got it cut so you can see on the underside I'm just gonna get my sander and I'm gonna sand it down I'm gonna take a really aggressive like a hundred grit sander and smooth all those edges off will be the perfect um, platform to put some really cool legs on here and I just ordered them they should be in shortly hopefully uh, by the end of this day so I hope to get them on um, one thing I noticed though is that with this coffee table came with like a little decorative edge too it's it's not pretty I don't like it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same technique as I used on the bottom and I'm going to cut this off and I went ahead and did a pass and I cut this off and made it flat. Kind of see it here. It's flat. And the best way to do that with these tables, of course, is to inspect it first before you cut it off. You want to make sure that you're not going to have any screws or nails that you're going to hit into and ruin your saw blade. So I looked at everything. Everything looks good. I'm going to use the top. Let me put this down and I'll show you. The top is going to be my guide. Let me get the camera set up closer so you can actually see what I'm going to cut. Okay, so if you can see this table, you see that there is this little bevel. This kind of goes down in. And actually, this table is uh, cracked down the middle, which is why I found it on the side of the road. But I'm going to repair that too. Um, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to cut this off. And I'm going to use 
this line here as my guide. So I don't even have to mark anything. I just want it just to rip it flat just this way. Okay, so you can get a close up and see where I actually ripped this all the way down and just made it square. And how I did that was I took this line right here where, where the wood kind of bevels down and I'm gonna cut all the way across and it's gonna give me this clean look all the way across, which is gonna be great. It's gonna be square and that's what I want. I want this table to look more industrial than I want it to look like this early American kind of, nah, just not a fan. I'm gonna use the same saw. I'm gonna use my Ryobi saw with the uh, blade that is uh, used for like uh, builders, like building houses, just cutting two befores and stuff like that. That's the, that's the blade that I have on there. Okay, just so that you know, you are gonna have to sand after you cut this. It's a rough cut, it's not perfect because I don't have the finished blade on it, but you can cut it and then you can sand it back. Also, if you're working indoors, you need a vacuum hooked up to this, which I don't have, but it's cold outside and I'm just gonna have to clean up all the sawdust, so. I'm gonna get busy and root this. Let me set it up right here. I'm gonna use my laser guide. Again, you can see, see how that red goes across? I'm gonna use that as my guide. And you just depress just a little bit to engage the laser, but it won't turn the blade on until you pull it completely. So just kind of play around with your tools to see. All right, ready? <laughs> Okay, here is my safety disclosure. You guys out there who have never used a power tool, do not pick up this power tool by yourself. Be with somebody who actually knows how to use it, who can guide you and watch you as you do it. Also, safety is super important. You wanna wear some type of protective gear. I wear my glasses because it protects my eyes. You do not want any kind of wood particles or chips flying in your eyes. You can wear gloves, I choose not to. Um, just safety first always. And if you're sensitive and you're in a, uh, in a not a well ventilated area and you're cutting, you need to wear like a mask at least so you don't breathe in the sawdust. Just safety first always. So practice with someone around you, get you a piece of board, a lumber or something and just start cutting. That's, that's the best way that you can learn when you're working with power tools. All right, so um, before we do anything, before we paint, because I'm gonna do paint on this as well. Of course, this is the art of painting furniture. I paint plus, I do other things too. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and strip the top of this. Because it's solid wood, it's hard rock maple. It's a beautiful wood top. I think it will look gorgeous on this, but we're gonna paint the base of it. Then we're gonna add those beautiful legs that I ordered. They came in, I can't wait to show them to you. So. Since I'm indoors and it's cold, I can't go outside. I don't want to do any more sanding. I could just rip this off really easily with like a 100 grit paper and I could go back with a 220 and sand it and it'd be perfect. It's just a lot of dust. After cutting all that off and cleaning all the dust out of the studio, it's just too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and use um, a safe strip and it's actually called citrus strip. It's orange, orange gel, that's what they call it. It's safe on paint and varnish and this is a, a varnish top, which is actually just kind of flaking off super old and just been outside probably. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna use this and it's 
Like I said, it's easy to use. It doesn't smell bad. So what I do is take it and apply it liberally all over the top. I use a little chip, a chip brush just to kind of paint it over the surface and then let it set for about 30 minutes or so. Super easy. Put uh, plastic down if you're worried about it slipping wherever, uh, slipping off your table. I'm just gonna try to be careful with this. But you want a thick coat on, so you just paint it on. I'm just gonna paint it to the edges there. Oops. See, I touched it with my finger. Use gloves. It's safe, but it's not that safe. Use gloves. I'm gonna put on a pair here in a minute as soon as I get this first coat on. So go ahead and put a thick coat on. We're gonna give it 30 minutes. Uh, you can speed it up by putting a plastic wrap on top of it because this product actually works when it's wet. If it dries, it's not working. It needs to stay wet. So if 30 minutes goes and comes after you put it on and it's dried, you didn't either put it thick enough or you're in an area that's too hot and maybe it dried out quick, so try taking some saran wrap and putting it over that to keep it wet so it'll keep being active. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and try to scrape off. I typically use um, a wood, a thin wood like paint scraper that has like a beveled edge so I can really get under that. I'm not worried too much about damaging the wood. I mean, a lot of people say use plastic scrapers. Um, this is a really rustic finish. This actually reminds you that it is a free piece found on the side of the road. So if I do something to it, I'm not too worried about it, but I think this works great. Um, first pass, it's pulling off some varnish. I can feel it coming off and you can actually see the varnish. Maybe that's a better, you see all that yellow under there, that's the varnish. Um, however, it looks like it's going to take two different coats. And that's, that's the one thing about this product that I really don't like is that it's not, it doesn't work as well as the chemical base. And this is supposed to be a more safe, um, product to use for those who are, you know, are sensitive to chemicals. It's a great product. Just know that you're probably going to have to use more of it to get the same results. So it's, it's totally up to you what you want to use, but, um, or you could go ahead and remove the first layer clean it. I'm, I've got some, um, after I scrape all this off, I'm going to go over it with odorless mineral spirits and some steel wool and just kind of scrub it really clean. Um, after that, I may just take a sander and get the rest of it off. It's going to be super thin at that point. And also, I want to get some of the stain off of the wood because I want the wood to be lighter so we can do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep scraping this off. You can see, see all that varnish that's coming off with it. I like to find something to scrape it off into, whether it be a trash can or whatever you have, just scrape it off. It's it's not really that messy as long as you have something to put it in once you scrape it off. Just a little at a time, you can hear it. You see it's really, really coming off in big sheets. So, all right, let me keep scraping. When I get this off, we will... Keep working on it till we get it ready and then we'll go to the next step. This is actually is very satisfying. Okay, actually back and put a second coat on because it just wasn't getting enough off. I mean, it, it was breaking it down, but this, um, it only react, it's, uh, it says, oh, maybe I should read the directions. <laughs> I've always used it for 30 minutes, then I let it, um, then I scraped it off. It says, um, it's active up to 24 hours, but has to stay wet. Okay, 
that's what I, that's why I don't use this a whole lot. Okay, so it has to stay wet. Remember I told you you could actually put um, like a cellophane over it, like a, a saran wrap or something to, to keep it wet and it'll stay active for 24 hours. But think about what happens in that 24 hours. Your wood is saturated with water. It is totally soaked at that point. And if you're not in a hurry and you don't mind, then go ahead and use this. I think it's great because it did work in 30 minutes. It already scraped off the first layer. I actually put it on twice and got that second layer off like the next 30 minutes. So it does work, but if you want to leave it on for heavy duty varnish, removal, paint, whatever, then you can leave it 24 hours. As long as it stays wet, it's active. So there. I need to start reading the directions more often. I'm about, I bet you do that too. We just we just do what we do, right? Okay, so I've got it all cleaned off. The varnish, the majority is off. I can run my hand over it and still feel a little bit of the varnish, tiny, tiny bit. So I'm gonna break the rest of that down with some odorless mineral spirits. I'm gonna take um, some steel wool. And uh, the steel wool is a super fine steel wool. It's the 0000, it's the 40 steel wool. Um, I use this for a lot of things. I use it for distressing furniture. I mean, it's just really good. It's like sandpaper, basically what it is, but you can use it with your wet products. So a little bit of the odorless mineral spirits. And again, work in a well-ventilated area. Uh, something protective on the floor. If you're worrying about dripping, I'm just gonna try to be really careful. And of course, I always wear protective footwear. I've got my rubber boots on. So if any of it spills on my foot, it's not gonna hurt anything. But I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna scrub it all over the piece. That's gonna remove any of, you can actually see a little bit on there, a little bit of the um, leftover stain that's kind of on the surface. Okay. And you can feel it when you're scrubbing. If it's clean, you're gonna feel it because it's gonna be super slick. And then you can take paper towel, cloth, whatever. I like to do paper, paper towels because I throw it away. Um, and two, here's a tip for you. You never throw away, don't dispose of your wet rags with any chemicals in a container. Mm -hmm. Set them out to dry before you put them in a bag to dispose of them. Um, a lot of these products are combustible and if they're in a bag and there's a little spark or something around, they'll catch on fire. We don't want any accidents like that ever, ever, ever. So be sure that you lay these out let them dry as well as the stripper let it dry once it's dry then you can safely put it in a garbage can and then and then throw it away if this works super quick i can feel it already breaking down the rest of that varnish or any leftovers on the surface there is a little bit of a stain on this wood it looks like maybe somebody put something wet on it i'm hoping um that i can sand that down if not it's just going to be the character of the piece and i'm going to embrace that i'm okay with it so we get all this cleaned up. After it's clean, I'm gonna get a 220 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna smooth it over and get ready either for stain or wax or I don't even know at this point what we're gonna do, but we're gonna do something. Yeah, wipe it back. Yeah, that's looking really good. Okay. Got the top stripped, it's clean, it's good to go. Um, it needs to be sanded. I want to get, what you're seeing now is actually some of the stain that's on this hard rock maple and I actually want to rip that down to where it's lighter. Actually sanded right here and it should look like this. It should be very light on top. I think it'll be really pretty. So you can do it one of two ways. You can do it by hand, the old fashioned way, get you some sandpaper a 220 grit paper and then just start sanding or you can break out your electric sander. I use a surface sanding system that's hooked to a vac. That's why I, I work indoors where it's warm and I don't have to get cold or get hot. I don't like to sweat, dude doesn't like to sweat. So this is a two, 220 grit paper. I'm gonna turn on my vacuum system so it doesn't get dust everywhere. And I'm gonna sand the top of this and show you what the difference is after I rip some of this stain off and what it's gonna look like.
Okay. Let's see the difference the sanding makes. Ton of difference. However, that stain I was worried about is still there. It's not as noticeable, but it is still there. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I think it's gonna be a beautiful wood top when I get it finished. We're gonna go ahead and sand the rest of this off. And then I'm gonna go back with the same sandpaper, the 220 grit. I'm gonna sand the base of it too, because we do need to scuff sand it before we paint it. And that's, we are gonna paint this. So be sure and clean it well first with um, your white lightning or whatever you use. There's a video in here about how to prep your furniture before paint. However you clean it, just make sure it's clean before you paint it and scuff sand it and then wipe it down and it's ready to paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish sanding this and I'll be right back. I like the square because the whole piece of furniture now is more of a square. So I think it's going to look really, really cute um, with these legs. So these legs come in two pieces. You have the legs here and then the plate is separate. And actually you just attach the plate with a screw that comes with it. And then you take the plate and you set it down, which has the legs on it where you want it. And then you screw it in. It's super, super easy. Okay. So you see the corner here? Notice the corner is not square and the base of the leg is square. That doesn't mean that it won't fit. This piece of furniture is solid wood. It's super hard. It's heavy. Putting it on the corner and having the majority of the screws fit is going to make it secure. Nobody's going to be doing a dance on top of this table. And if you are, you probably don't want to put these legs on here. But it's going to be strong. It's going to be durable. Don't feel bad if you don't have another block on the corner when you have something of this magnitude. And it's super heavy, super durable. These uh, legs, I think, are, are rated for like 275 pounds each. Each leg. So I don't think anybody's going to get up on this coffee table and do a dance. So... I'm going to go ahead and go with it. So what you do first is put this in line. Then you're going to, uh, you're going to get a drill with a bit. Now, you're going to use a bit to drill pilot holes in each one of these little places where the screw goes. But the bit itself is smaller than the screw. You only want to make a guide into the wood so that that screw, when it goes in, it's going to follow that guide. It's going to go exactly where you want it. And you're not going to take any risk of splitting the wood. Plus, this wood is super hard. And if you try to put that in there without a pilot hole, it's going to be really tough to do. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. This bit is smaller than an actual screw, the, the body part that goes into the wood. So just drill a little pilot hole. It doesn't have to be as long maybe half of the length of the screw and you should be good to go. You can mark the holes with a pencil if you want to and then go back and drill the holes. Sometimes I like to cheat and I just go ahead and do it by holding it in place. First screw in in a corner. corner is so that I can move it and adjust it to exactly where I want it and then secure it. Okay. All right, let's get that next one in. I like to go from a corner to the corners and then fill in. And that'll make sure that it doesn't move. takes minutes to install these legs. 
what a huge difference it makes on this piece. Look how cute that is. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing what you can do with a piece of furniture just by cutting off some of the corners of it and then adding some different legs. So for this piece, I envision um, a paint and stain combo. Of course, I like the natural look of this wood. If I could keep it this color, I would, but I have yet to find a top coat or a sealer or stain that would keep this color wood. Um, if you happen to know any, let me know. Shoot me an email at donatedodotsandsigns.com. But what I'm gonna do is, um, I do like this color. This is Old Masters gel stain, and it's like an all-in-one stain and sealant. Um, sometimes I still go ahead and put a sealer on, it just depends. Um, but it's called fruit wood, and it's light. It's a light color, and the beauty of this is that once you put it on before it dries, you can go back with your odorless mineral spirits and you can wipe some of it back to where it just leaves like a really clear like a stain on this it still will keep the natural beauty of the wood and I like to use cheesecloths I buy these um cheesecloths in a bundle and they come in like little sheets they're uh almost lint free nothing is lint free really um but they make perfect little staining pads and I just uh fold them up into a little square and then I'm going to apply the gel stain over the table. I always want to mix your gel stain. It does settle after it sets for a while. I've had this can for a while now. I've used it on multiple projects. Um, if you watch many of these videos in here, you've probably seen this same gel stain. I'll take it and even use a different gel stain with it. Sometimes I'll mix the colors and mix my own color. It's just, it's fun. You can use it. It's like paint, but it's a, it's an oil-based product. So I'm going to take the gel stain on my pad. I'm going to start. I'm going to go with the grain of the wood. I'm gonna go back and forth and just give that a really, really light stain. I This looks like butcher block to me, which I'm obsessed with right now. We're getting ready to, to redo our kitchen, a home we just purchased, and we're wanting to put uh, the butcher block cabinet tops, and that's what this reminds me of, this beautiful natural wood. And this stain, I think, is perfect for this look. You wipe it on, and then you can wipe it back. That's gorgeous. It's still keeping it showing. It's clear and transparent enough that you can actually see through it, so you can see the wood grain, and that's what I want. I don't want to cover up the beauty of the wood. I just want to give it a little bit of color and some protection. And although this piece was found on the side of the road and it's got a big crack down the middle of it, um, it still looks great. I mean, it looks like it's a part of the piece, like it's supposed to be there. So I'm, I'm gonna embrace it. I think it looks, it looks fine. Not gonna worry about it. Okay, I got the stain on. Just finished. It took me like two minutes to get it on. I'm gonna take another cheesecloth. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna. Just fold it into a square to make a little pad. I'm gonna take some of the mineral spirits and we're gonna see what this does. This may lighten it even more. Yeah, it's pulling some of that off so it will be lighter, which that's what I want. Then we can go and put like a an oil base top coat on here to protect it. Yeah, I like that much better. It's just enough to stain it without covering it up. It lets the wood grain show even more. So a lot, but you want to be sure to go with the wood grain and you remove some of this. Let it dry, see what you got. All right, it's all cleaned, it's ready to paint. I did not put um, the sealer on this yet. We'll do that after we paint, because I have to still let this dry, because it's still a little wet. 
Um, I'm gonna go ahead and paint. Uh, like I said, I already sanded this down. I gave it a good scuff sanding. I cleaned it well with, I used white lightning from Dixie Bell. I mix it in water in a spray bottle, wipe it on, wipe it off with clear water and it's good to go. So I did repair some holes because I'm gonna put some new hardware on there. Of course, it's gonna get the industrial hardware. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and paint. And the paint that I chose today, I'm gonna just paint the, the midsection of this is, um, is uh, Dixie Bell's Silk One in One, excuse me, Silk All in One Mineral Paint. And the reason I like it is because, for one, it's all in one. You don't have to do anything. You, you just paint it on and it's good. It's got a top coat built in it, stain blocker, all of that stuff. Um, but also, I want this to be a very, very sleek look. Um, modern, industrial, is not distressed. It doesn't have all the stuff that we normally do as artistic designs but just a very, very clean look. We're gonna clean wood, clean paint, and then clean black legs. So with the um, Dixie Bell's uh, All-in-One Mineral Paint, you wanna make sure that you mix it well. Um, paint tends to settle. I don't shake this because it's a little thicker. It's self-leveling, it's easy to put on, but I wanna make sure that anything in here, like the top coat that's all built in, the stain blockers, all is incorporated, especially if it's been sitting for a while. So I've got this stirred up very well. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint. Um, I'm gonna take the drawers out and paint them sitting up. I like to paint my drawers setting up unless I'm painting a design on the top. That way it all settles and it's just smooth and it looks pretty. So I'm gonna take these out, but I'm gonna go ahead and start painting the base. Also, um, it's a must that you use a really good brush and I like a synthetic brush. I like Dixie Bell's synthetic brushes, but this is like, I think this is called the Scarlet Brush. I like this with the Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint because it gives just a really smooth finish. It's, it's just really nice, and you can see how well it goes on. The paint, again, is thick. You can see it kind of sticks to the brush. We're gonna need two coats of this, and this color is called Oyster. It's kind of a white, but it's got a tint of gray to it, and I really, really like the coverage it gives, and I especially like this brush because it's very smooth, and you don't have to worry about overworking the paint. You just put it on and let it dry. It's gonna level out by itself. So for beginner painters, this is the best paint. If you're a sloppy painter, you might wanna cover your legs up so that you don't mess up your, uh, your beautiful black legs. Um, if you do get some on it, just take a wet cloth and wipe it off really quickly, and you should be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one coat on this. I'm gonna look at it and more than likely it's gonna get two coats. It needs two coats for durability because the top coat is built in. Okay, I did two coats of the uh, Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint and Oyster and it covered in two coats. Two coats, that's all it took. I love this paint. It, like I said, it's great for beginners. It's self-leveling. It just is a beautiful finish. So now I wanna go back to the top and I wanna tackle the top because you know what? It's looking too yellow for me. So I have an option. We have lots of options and here's what I chose. Wax, have you ever thought about wax? Yes, you can put wax on top of gel stain because remember gel stain has like a, a polyurethane, whatever it is, a hard coat and finish. You don't need, really need to do anything after you put gel stain on. It dries, it's, it's good to go, but you can also paint over it and you can wax over it. So I'm gonna use a white wax over this. What's gonna happen, and this is what I hope happens, this has enough wood grain in it that some of the white's gonna get stuck in the wood grain and it's gonna give me a little more of the light, the white color into the wood. So it'll kind of blend it. The wood look will still be there, but it's not gonna be so in your face. All right, so white wax it is, and this is Dixie Bell's white wax. It is a water-based wax, but when it dries, it's durable and it's hard. It takes about 30 days really to cure, but it dries pretty quickly. Um, also, I like to use a big, beefy wax brush. I love these brushes. They're great for applying wax. So the directions are to apply a small amount over your piece, let it dry 15 to 20 minutes, and then buff. I typically don't let it let it set 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how much I want to soak into the wood. 
I will wipe it back sometimes immediately. It just really depends. So um, I use paper towels when I wipe back. You can use a cloth, and probably a soft cloth is better, but I use paper towels because it's just disposable. So you wanna put a small amount on your brush, and I say a small amount. A little bit goes a long, long way. And if you're worried about getting too much on your brush and you do get too much, you can offload it onto something else. So remember, this is already sealed. We're just kind of add some lightness to this wood. I'm gonna rub the wax into the wood in the direction of the wood grain. And it's very, very light. The wax is, you can see through it. And then I'm not gonna wait 15 to 20 minutes because I'm gonna wipe back any excess that's sitting on top before it absorbs in because it is a water base, so it's gonna absorb into it. That's the reason you wait 15 to 20 minutes. But when I wipe it back, what happens is it leaves a really light hue to it, but some of the wax kind of gets stuck down in the wood grain, which makes it beautiful. It's a beautiful look. It's a great way to tone down yellows in your woods. And again, I'm using a paper towel. If your wood is a little rougher and maybe um, it's not as smooth as you want it to be, sometimes using a paper towel is gonna leave little tiny pieces of uh, paper. So opt to use a cloth if you, if you have it. But for me, paper towels work great. And this is super smooth because we smoothed it out and finished it. Oh, that's beautiful. I love the light that brought to this piece to kind of tie all of this in there, all of this in together. Um, and of course, the last part of this makeover, of course, is putting on the hardware, the pulls, because these drawers uh, do have storage space in them. We're going to put some cool pulls on them. Now, let me, let's talk about pulls for a minute and where you buy your hardware or your pulls. I use Amazon a lot, a lot. And sometimes I buy in bulk. Um, you can get like 20 of the same pulls for really inexpensive and that's what I do. So you probably will see a lot of the same pulls over on different makeovers that I do here in the Art of Painting Furniture and this is one of them. Um, these are uh, from like the old post office file cabinets and you can actually slip a label in here but it's got this cool little cup that you can put which is perfect for the squares because this actually looks like a little mini file cabinet, right? So it's gonna be cute and it's black and it matches the leg. So it's gonna tie it all in together. So I'm gonna take them, I'm gonna install these on all four of those. These are super easy. These actually have screws that you screw in from the front. Unlike the ones that you have to mark the holes and stuff, these are super easy to install. And for something that's not gonna be used much, these this hardware is perfect and it was really inexpensive. So I'll be sure and put the, um, I'll put a link to these also in the products list so you can find these over on Amazon. So let me go ahead and get this installed and then give you a front aerial kind of a view of the whole piece now that it's all put together. So to be totally honest with you, I didn't see this coming. I really didn't think it would turn out this good so there's a lesson in this, you know, even though when you start your makeovers, you're not sure the direction it's going to go, just keep pushing through because you're going to find something amazing in the end. And be sure and stop and pick up those roadside finds and have fun with it. I mean, this is a, just a, a great way for you to actually jump in and just try some things. Even if you try it and it fails, it doesn't matter because it was free. So thanks for joining me again in another Art of Painting Furniture, uh, furniture Makeover. And we will see you in the next video. Happy day.